In summary, in chapter three, we went over PC hardware essentials, and we were hitting the major components, uh, some of the major components in a, in a lot more detail. We started with electricity and power. We discussed the different elements of electricity, exactly what it is, uh, and then voltage and current and resistance, those types of things. We also talked about static electricity and how it's very dangerous for computer components, uh, and we need to uh, take steps to ensure that anti that we don't have any static discharge uh, on those components. That involved uh, potentially anti-static wrist straps, that involved uh, making sure the, the air has proper levels of humidity, proper handling techniques of, of memory and drives inside anti-static bags, uh, those kinds of things. Then we went in to look at the power and the power supplies functions of converting AC to DC and stepping down the 110 volts AC to 5, 12, and 3.3 volts of direct current for all the computer's components. We discussed the different types of connectors uh, for power, the Molex for drives, the Berg connector for floppy drives, uh, and then the SATA connectors for the new serial ATA. Drives. We also talked about the different types of connectors for the motherboard and then potentially uh, some power problems and how you could fix those. We moved then to the central processing unit. The CPU being the most important uh, chip in the system, it's the brains, it performs all the processing on our behalf. There's a variety of types of CPUs. We went over some of the characteristics and how to tell the difference between one CPU and another. We also talked about slots and sockets and the physical packaging of the CPUs. Then we moved into motherboards. Uh, motherboard is the primary circuit board. It's what every other component connects into. It provides power and data pathways, referred to as buses, for all of those computer components. And so it's a very important part of the system, if not the most important part. We talked about the BIOS and the CMOS, the difference between those, and a variety of settings that you could use for configuring figuring that, as well as potentially upgrading the BIOS if that was needed. And then finally, we looked at memory. We discussed the different types, random access memory versus read-only memory, synchronous versus asynchronous, and then we also looked at uh, the characteristics of SDRAM versus DDR2 and 3, and the physical packaging, SIMs uh, and DIMMs. And so we, in, in all of these, we also looked at the installation, proper handling, uh, and troubleshooting of these various system components.